What is up guys, welcome to another video. So here we are back in the garage with the E30. And if you guys watched the last video, we did finally get this thing running, which is super awesome. So just that much closer to driving it. So today, my buddy Jeff Ray is coming down from Superformance Fab. He's gonna be building the exhaust and we're doing three inch stainless steel all the way from the turbo back. And very excited, he's an amazing fabricator and can't wait to see this thing come together. So let me show you guys all the piping. So here's all the piping here. We got 245s, 290s, two straights. We got some pie cuts. This is the muffler I'm gonna be running. V-bands, and also I'm gonna be recirculating the wastegate. So that is the pipe in there. And yeah, all right, here we go. All right guys, so this is Jeff Ray. He's gonna be doing the exhaust for me from Superformance Fab. Pretty excited, so. Uh, yeah, man. Ready to rock? Yeah. We got the, all the material here. We got everything we need to get this thing going. We're going to get the downpipe started today, get the wastegate run, get that thing tied into it. And then uh, from there, we'll be looking underneath the car and then we'll plumb the rest of the exhaust system out and uh, get this thing wrapped up so you can get it r running on your birthday, man. Yeah, man. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Stoked. I got a couple of drop pieces here and then this other 90. And we have the full mandrel bend there. So to get. The turbo's on a little bit of an angle. I'll probably use this to square it up a little bit. And then we can uh, measure the gap between the two. This will probably get cut back just a little bit and get it snaked down through there. We got plenty of room. Nothing's gonna burn up on it. Brake line's pretty far away. No harness or nothing back there. Yeah, that quality is crazy. So I got this piece I made here to make the layout for these cuts easier. Just make sure my part's flat on the table and then it makes for a nice square cut around the part. Uh, makes it easier not having to have vertical band saws and things of that nature to get square cuts on your tubing and stuff like that. So now I'll get the machine set up, we'll get this tacked to a piece and start cutting this piece back. Start with that. We'll tack this to a piece and it'll make the piece easier to cut. So we'll tack it, it'll get, the, get it out there off of the bench some. We'll make that cut and start from there and we'll cut back on the mandrel bend. So we get that looking down, we'll start with the wastegate and start plumbing that over to it. Get that thing located and uh, yeah. Yeah, I just make a couple of tacks there to hold the piece and then I take the band saw and cut around it. And we'll uh, start building it out from there. A lot of back and forth process through this part of it. Then once it starts going, we get a few pieces tacked together. We'll have a number of welds to make. I don't cut all the way through the pipe because the blade will deform and deflect. So I'll cut part of it, spin the part around, and then cut the rest of it. And then I'll have the drop piece on my left side so I can still support the saw and then catch the part with this hand so it doesn't drop. Alright, I like that piece there. So now I'm going to go ahead and tack this to here so I don't have to try to hold it and hold that piece and then use my non-existing third hand to take the measurement. I'll tack this to that ferrule and we'll get that measurement. I'm gonna save this 90 for another part. We'll use your mandrel with the leg on it and then cut that one back and then uh, it eliminates more welds up here because we'll use these in another place. But this allows me to take a measurement from the end of the radius to where I want. So on the mandrel bend, I can just cut that back and it's already got the straight piece on it. I'll take my straight piece over there and tape it to here. That way when I put the part down here, I know that I have it in the right spot, that I'm not touching the firewall or not touching the header. And then that allows me to pull the correct measurement that I need right here to cut the mandrel bend back, so. All right, so we got the piece taped on here for a mock-up. We'll stick it down in the hole here and keep a good clearance off of the firewall there and use our straight edge to get a measurement. I'm gonna say about 
three inches on the straight there will be fine. Inch and a quarter to inch and a half gap between the firewall and about an inch between the header down here. So that'll be plenty. I'll give us room to get it in there. And so I'm gonna cut that at three and a quarter from the end of the radius of the fitting here with the straight on the uh, mandrel bend. And we'll fit that in place, match mark it, get it tacked. I'm going to make a couple of welds. So I took the, the part, laid it on here, and made sure all these outside points are aligned. So essentially that's where the part lays with the same radius. And then I took our three and a quarter inch measurement, marked it there. Now I'll chuck this piece in the vise. Use the old trusty wrap around to get a square. Oh, I don't need that. Forgot I got this custom part I built. So now we can just square this up on there. Too many tools to do what I need to do. I've been doing it for so long now. Now you can see all the clearance between everything back there. Nice, well, that's perfect. Yeah. You're like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Done this a time or two. Or three or four. Yeah. <laughs> so I made a couple of match marks, take it over to the bench. Get that tacked off. Can I go from there? Yeah, because metal, when you do this, it's got to stretch, pull, and like compact in areas. So the material does weird things, especially when you cut it, it's going to relieve. So then you'll see the little bit of distortion and things of, of that nature. But nothing the persuader can't handle. <laughs> so not that there was a bad fit, it just takes away some of that high-low a little bit more. Now it's like really perfect. Yeah. You won't even... And then by the time it's welded, you won't even notice. It'll all be broke down as one. Now what I'll do is I'll make these welds because stainless uh, tends to draw a lot. So heating and contracting, it's going to pull. So making these welds, this pipe could end up a little bit further this way or this way. So I like to build this as a process, not tack the whole thing together and then weld it out because it could move that little bit. So we'll go ahead and make these two welds and then we'll fit. We'll continue to fit on from there. So I'm going to get the purge set up on this. We're going to cap it and we're going to take the argon, which is what we're using to shield the pipe with when we weld it. We're going to shield the inside of the pipe too, because when this stuff breaks down, we don't want oxidation on the inside. We want a full 100% penetration on the weld here. So we'll get this thing all capped off, purged out, and then we'll make these welds. Also, having this cap on here, when I weld this flange will help prevent it from distorting so it's flat still. So it will soak some of that heat out of there and it being clamped together is gonna help it from distorting too. So we got this end capped off with the silicone cap and we'll take the argon hose, plug it in on this side and get this thing purged out. Just takes a minute. <laughs> Alright, there's the 
first part. Now we'll repeat this process uh, seven to 11 more times. <laughs> and uh, we'll get this thing plumbed all the way out, man. Oh yeah. We'll get our O2 bungs located in here. We'll start to work the wastegate over. Uh, first, I'll probably get the 90 looking back and get the full downpipe done, and then we'll start to work that wastegate into it. So now we'll go underneath the car and start looking at what it looks like down there. So this mandrel is like the perfect length here almost, but we got a little bit of a bend to do up here to get it so it looks straight down and we don't have to miter this thing back at all. So we'll use this to gauge how much of a bend we need up here. Now once we get that piece set and square, we can get that tacked together and then we'll cut this piece back put the flange there and then on the back side we'll put the bellow that'll go to the rest of the exhaust once we get this piece with that flange there we'll start building out our wastegate and tie it into here then we can start building out the rest of the exhaust that's essentially what the downpipe is going to look like we'll put the v-band flange there and then somewhere in here it'll have a little stub off with the V-band for the wastegate to tie into. And then this will all snake right down in there with ease. Yeah. So I'll just check that, make sure my face down there is where I want it with the V-band. And I'll do a little stub out thing to make sure it clears underneath the car everywhere where I like. And then uh, we'll get that part welded out with the V-band in that little degree that's in there. And then we'll start working on the wastegate and getting that thing recirced back into that downpipe. So everything's going good so far. We got good clearance on everything. Working out just how we planned, man. Oh yeah. Now we got that all tacked together. We'll get it in there and we'll actually measure from the ground to the bottom of the tires and check to see what our actual ride height clearance is between the ground and the bottom of the pipe here. We got about uh, three quarters to an inch of clearance between the chassis and the exhaust here, which is plenty. So we should have plenty of ground clearance, but we'll go ahead and check that as well because the car is not on the ground. so. We'd like to know what our actual ground height clearance is so we'll get this bolted in there take those couple of measurements and see what the difference is to know our actual ride height clearance there and uh make these couple of welds if all that's good if we need to bring it up a little more i can break these couple of tacks apart and that'll bring the pipe up closer to the chassis so we have room to play there still so we'll check that and then uh we'll start to get this stuff welded out from there Before I broke those tacks apart, I made uh, all these match mark lines so when I cut out the spacer that I just took out of there to give us more ground clearance, my pipe, I don't have to put it back on the car to locate this again. So I'll just line those lines back up, tack it, and it should be in the same spot as it was, just giving us a little bit more clearance. So we got the wastegate dump here. I took my degree finder and put it on the wastegate outlet right there. And it was at 18 degrees. So I matched that off of the 90 here and made that cut. So now this pipe is essentially sitting level with the car. And then from here, I'll come off with a 45. So it'll come back and tie into the downpipe right here. We'll fit the bellow in there and have a V-band so this piece is removable and then we'll keep it short so this downpipe can get in and out of here easier we'll tack this on here cut this thing back put a degree on here and then start fitting the 
we skate into the down pipe. You won't be able to see much because we're going to be way up in here, but it'll look like something when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get the piece coped and fit with the V-band to the downpipe first, and then we'll build to that. So I have everything in a general location of, you know, where this is gonna tie into on the bellow from the wastegate. Uh, but this I need hard mounted, so I'm going from an affix point to an affix point, and then we'll have that little bit of movement with the bellow there. That's gonna allow us to make the fit between the two a little bit easier. So we'll get this fit made, cut into the downpipe, welded with the V-band there, and so it clears on the downpipe because you have the circumference of that flange there, you need the space. So we'll get that done, and then we'll finish the little pipe between the wastegate and the downpipe here. So now that this is about where I want it, we'll check it one more time before we cut it and actually locate it onto the downpipe, and then we'll build the rest of the part there. So we have our wastegate dump integrated to the downpipe here with the V-band, everything clears there, so it's nice and accessible. Here's the first piece I started with, and then the part going into it. Make sure everything is where Gross. I want it. Literally perfect fit. There it is. Wow. So now we'll pull the downpipe out, cut the hole, integrate the wastegate dump in there, and then I'll tack this piece together so this is affixed exactly where I want it because it's going to draw a little bit when I make these welds here. And then that'll be it. And then we can move on to the rest of the exhaust. Nice, dude. Now we'll cut that out and make that weld on the V-band and then to there as well. When I do this, I want a little landing there. So I'll draw my line in and I'll leave that there. So this will be the actual hole we cut out. This is just a guide. I actually watch my outside line when I make the cut and stuff, but that'll be good. Yeah, we're chipping away from the pile here. We got the hole cut out of there. Now I'll put the burr bit on the die grinder and we'll just clean the hole up, get all the deburring off of there, and then we'll be ready to tack the uh, dump on there and weld this thing out. So now I have a perfect little like 16th landing around, which is what the material thickness is for that to lay on. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> the wizard, bro, the wizard. That's right, son. That's so yeah, so now we'll get that tacked on there, uh, cap this thing off, put a purge on it, make the V-band weld and that weld, and we can install this well, not for the last time we have to put O2 bungs in it, but that's just two quick little holes. Uh, we'll get those located when we uh, fit the rest of the uh, wastegate there. We'll pull it all out one more time, and then that will be it for the downpipe. The wastegate will be tied in, and then we just got to run the rest of the exhaust, man. Yeah, man. That's it. Back in for yep. fit number 25. Yeah. 
like I said, it's a, it's a process, that's for sure. It just takes time. But this is gonna be the most extensive part of the build too, like I said. We'll get all this here knocked out. The rest of it will go a lot quicker. This is the piece coming off of the wastegate. These bellows here flow directional. So we don't want the flow going backwards into that slip fit there. So it'll go that way into there. And we can either mark this or tack this in place to make sure that the fit is exactly how we want it. Then we can pull it out, make these four welds, and it'll clamp right in. There you go. Bro, that looks so clean. Damn. Now we'll Bro. put the ground on here, put a couple of tacks on the bellow there, pull that part out, weld it out. And while this is in, for the last time, we'll locate our O2 sensor bungs. That way we can get those welded out and install that for the final time. Oh, let's go, bro. Bro, it looks so clean. If the wastegate wasn't so hard to pull out of there, I'll usually pull that off and I'll use that oh, yeah. to clamp it too because I know the fit is good and it takes the heat so I don't have to worry about it burning up or anything. So, it is what it is. Sometimes you gotta make with what you got. There it is in all its glory. Bro, that came out so sick, dude. Yep. Three inch down pipe, integrated wastegate dump. Boom. That's some fab work right there, boy. That's right, man. <laughs> get her installed, get all that together. Part's done. Just install your O2 and wideband. We'll be good to go. What is up guys, welcome back. So day one made a ton of progress. So here we are on day two. Uh, yesterday we finished up the entire downpipe as well as the wastegate plumbing back into the downpipe as well. Everything came out super amazing. Really, really stoked on it. And yeah, it's coming out straight up awesome. So uh, Jeff's out of the car now. He's working on going back from the downpipe down to the back of the car. And we're gonna put in a race muffler, which is right here. And then we have an exhaust tip, which you guys are gonna to have to wait till the end of the video for. So hopefully you guys are enjoying it so far. This is the mid pipe section of the car. So this here is past the rear differential. And then our uh, muffler and exhaust tip will continue on from right here. So we got three welds left on this. We'll get it installed. Then we can build the rest of it tomorrow and put some hangers on it and we'll be good to go. So we're just gonna continue on welding, making these couple of welds and uh, get this thing wrapped up, man.
Looks something like that, bro. Yeah, man. All right, Jeff, how did you make that work? So we cut the two and a half inch piece that came into here originally off because we're running a three inch exhaust system here. So I cut that off, cut and coped this three inch piece to it, and we just got it long here for a holder piece. Then we'll cut it back, put the muffler on there. But when I have that corner to corner fit, it can tend to open up on us, it being thin wall stainless like this. So I take my thinner wire and I just lay that in there and fuse it in there real quick. I let it cool for a minute and then I come back through with a little bit thicker 1 16th wire and I actually put the heat to it and we get some nice dimes laid in there. So now we'll get this piece cut back, get the muffler fit to it and then I think we got one or two cuts left for that tailpipe section, four welds and then we'll be done there man and put a couple exhaust hangers on it and we'll be ready to fire this thing yeah, up man. Let's go. Yeah, I'm excited so. instantly like that like I went to school but it was a 48 hour night course like learn as you play. it wasn't like curriculum none yeah, of this yeah, stuff yeah. and the teacher he's like you can do that he's like try this boom did it immediately yeah. try this boom did it immediately and I was like I seen a piece of tubing that was purged like aseptic welded like this and I was like man how do they do that in like a long ass piece of pipe and get the inside welded you know uh -huh. and uh He's like, take another course with me and I'll show you. So I'm like, all right. Took another 48 hour course with him. And that's all I worked on was tubing. And he was a maintenance man at Tropicana. So from there, he referred me to the process company that did their process ah, okay. work there. That's so that's how I got my in in the industry. Yep. Nice, dude. And that's where the, you know, proficiency and having 100% proficiency with all the welds in the food, beverage, and pharmaceutical industry know came in so yeah, it shows, every man. weld had to be perfect every time that's it <laughs> that's crazy bro the consistency is insane yeah like it's every weld is yeah exactly the same like yes money crazy yeah. bro it takes you know a lot of like linear footage of welding i couldn't tell you you know it's yeah. just like it's the same circle every time so it's like as long as you take the time to do the right prep to get good fits, because 95% of what I did was fabricate. Yeah, yeah. 5% of what I did was actually weld. Yeah. So it takes, you know, practicing, getting good and proficient at fabricating things correctly to be able to get the perfect end result that we want. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Impressive, <laughs> bro. So impressive. Thanks, man. Damn. Dude, <laughs> bro, there it is. It literally sits perfect. Yeah, buddy. Holy shit, dude, that's spot on. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Holy shit. Oh, dude, that looks so good, bro. The dual three and a half inch was where it's at. Wow, bro. That is clean. Yeah. That literally. We got it from over perfect. here too. Yeah, that fills it out nicely. Bro. Bro, you're tagged. You're ready to go. <laughs> Fire this thing up. Sick. Damn, son. Yeah, that looks killer. Yeah, that is yeah, perfect. Oh, shit. Wow. So right now I'm cutting all the stub out pieces that will weld to all the frame rails. This will go on one and then I'll have two at the back section 
that'll come off of there and these hangers will support off of and then from there we'll build the ones off of the tubing that will go to the bottom side of the rubber grommet so got a couple of these to bend we'll ground off some spots on the chassis weld these in place and then we'll build the rest of the parts we got one more to build just like this and then i'm going to look at the one that's going to go up front more towards the trans mount where we'll come off of that and uh yeah we're not too far from being done man, yeah, man. It's done. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. That's insane. New and real. Yeah. And then you can rotate it back there where we need to. Do you like it? Yeah, just twist it just a little bit. Yep, just twist it. And then hold it there and I'll tighten it down. And then we got that back one we can play with too if you need. Yeah, it's pretty much right. It is right there. Wow, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, dude. Bro. Gucci, <laughs> man. Holy shit. Dude. That shit. What do you think, Zoe? Huh? She hasn't said a word the whole time. <laughs> She's speechless. <laughs> Years since this car has been moving. Oh, brakes. Brake start. We should drop a little bit. <laughs> this is what happens. Car guys get excited. <laughs> Just need some tuning. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, it was my goal to drive it before my birthday, and I got the you, goal done. You got it. I didn't make it very far, but <laughs> it drove under its own power. Yeah. She's out of the garage. We can at least appreciate that. <laughs> there she is in all her glory. Bro, that exhaust fits. Beautiful. Look at that thing. Healer.
Yeah. Yeah, she just needs a good tune. Yeah. <laughs> now it just comes down to like tuning, dialing, and then the fuel and um, ignition spark and all that. The timing. So. We'll be ready to rock, man. Yeah. All right. Try one more time. Try one more time. Try to yeah, get her in there. If not. I know my neighbors ain't helping me push this thing. <laughs> You thought you had today off. You thought wrong. Yeah, today was supposed to be rested. <laughs> yeah, I think you should leave her crooked in there anyway. Yeah, it looks, looks a lot cool. cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Right on. Hell yeah. Sweet. Thanks, bro. Yeah, bro. Got him. Killer. Next. Yeah. Get this thing tuned. Absolutely. Then you'll really be driving. Oh yeah, I can actually like, give it throttle. Lada's not gonna know what to think, bro. Now she's got a real car guy. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm the like, fun begins. I didn't know. I didn't see this side of you before. <laughs> For real, it's crazy. All right, guys, that is it. She is running. A huge thank you to Jeff Ray from Superformance Fab. The exhaust came out amazing. Be sure to check them out. Link will be in the description box down below. And yeah, for. Yeah, Bro. any exhaust needs, turbo systems, intake, intercooler work, chassis work, uh, street cars, drift cars, exotics, anything like that. I've yeah. got 10 years plus experience doing this stuff professionally. So It's legit. You guys seen all yeah. the work and yeah. it is flawless. So super happy. Very stoked. Thank yeah. you, Jeff. Thank you. It was a good time. Yeah, man. You know. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video.